boss and I, we were we were holding hands, and we were running, 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 and I remember I fell because the water was all over, and he just grabbed me up, and we continued to run, and then the explosion happened, and then I didn't see, I didn't hear, I didn't anything, I literally thought I died. Mm. I thought I died. And what it was is, let's say, if it's you and I, and we were holding hands, when that explosion came, and I found this out later, you got blown over there, and I got blown over there. Okay? So you got close to the door, and... I don't even know how close to the door we were, because mm -hmm. we just started running, because that thing was coming. We just, everybody just started screaming and running. It was like... You know, I mean, so the everything. Force from the other building. Yes, all over. of that stuff, oh. and it was like everything. You know, the chairs, everything was yeah. all in this thing, and it was like, you know, we turned around like that, and we were just like, oh my God, mm -hmm. and everybody was crying and screaming and running, and then boom, nothing. And when I opened up my eyes again, I was on my knees. And it was pitch black and I couldn't hear anything. Mm. And I thought I was dead and I touched myself and I realized my, I didn't have any shoes on. Mm. And I still couldn't see but I'm touching on the ground and I'm feeling body parts. Mm. And mm. I put, picked my hands up immediately, immediately, immediately because I was so afraid. And I'm praying, I'm still praying and I can't get up. I can't get up. And I'm saying, God, please, you did bring me this far. <coughs> I said, I have to get up. I have to get up. And I didn't even know I was cut. I didn't know I was hurt. I didn't know anything. And I finally got up. And what had happened was I fell into a pile of glass. So mm. I messed up my knee. Mm. I cut up my arms trying to get myself up because yeah. what you don't know is when you walk down 86 flights of stairs you are so sore yeah. and you are so tired and, and you are panicked yeah. and you are drained mm -hmm. and this is like nothing you've ever experienced in your life and you just want to lay there mm -hmm. you don't want to yeah. eat and you just want to give up mm -hmm. but I couldn't give up mm -hmm. so I finally got up mm -hmm. and then I saw a light mm -hmm. and I couldn't believe it. I saw this light, and this man said, if you see this light, come to the light. I'll get you out. You know how many times I heard that from other people on TV? And so many, this is, to me, God's angel. I can't tell you if it was a fireman, a policeman, a man. I can't tell you who that person was holding that light. I can only tell you that it was a light, and... All of a sudden, all these people, it looked like, looked like dawn of the dead. Mm. Everybody was all covered in white, and everybody was moving real slow, and they got up, and everybody was coming, and we were all walking in the same direction. And this woman, she saw me, and she grabbed my hand, and she took her towel, and she wiped my face, and then she saw I didn't have any shoes on, mm -hmm. and she said, Oh, no, we gotta slow down because you don't have any shoes on. I was like, no, let's run. Let's mm -hmm. get out this building. Mm -hmm. I want to get out this building. Mm -hmm. And I got out the building. And when I got out the building, the terror continued. What Just, do you mean by that? Well, when I got out the building, I was walking. And I guess the ambulance people saw the blood on my clothes. I really did not know I was hurt. And they were waving me to come and get in this ambulance. And I looked at them, and I looked up, and I don't know if you know anything about the World Trade Center, but the way it is, it, it has the plaza, and then it's the street. So the ambulance was lodged under the plaza. Oh, no. Okay? And when I turned around and I looked up, I saw all this fire coming out of the building mm. from up where I was. Mm. And I looked at the ambulance people, and they were like, you're hurt, you're hurt. And they were telling me to come there, and I was like, no, no. And I just kept walking, no shoes on, no anything. I was definitely completely in a daze. I didn't know anything. I didn't know anything. I didn't even know what happened. 
I didn't know the other building had gone down. I learned all of this later. Mm -hmm. And I kept walking and a news reporter stopped me and he put a mic in my face and he's asking me all these questions. And mm -hmm. that's how my family and friends found out I was alive mm -hmm. because they saw that on television. Because they were all trying to call you. But they they, right. They were trying to call me. I didn't have my phone with me. Mm -hmm. um, there was no reception anyway. Mm -hmm. um, I was trying to walk home mm -hmm. because the last time I was going to walk across the bridge. I got the last bus mm -hmm. home. So I was trying, I was going the same direction mm -hmm. I went the last time. Mm -hmm. And um, this guy saw me and I was, uh, I kept going to the ambulance. I did finally feel a hurt. Finally I felt this thing. Mm -hmm. And I kept going to these different ambulances and asking them for a band-aid. Mm -hmm. And they didn't even have a band-aid. People were so hurt. They said mm -hmm. arms, they were heads. Mm -hmm. I mean, the stuff I saw, I, I get there and then I said, never mind, never mind. And I just kept walking. Yeah. And I kept walking. And this guy saw me and he said, oh sister, you are hurt. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm going to get somebody. I said, no, just get a band-aid for me. Mm -hmm. If you can get a band-aid, I'll be so happy. And he went and that's what I know. He had, he had the ambulance driver like this, brought him to me, <laughs> brought him to me. I, I was just like, I wish I could thank him today. I hope one day he sees this and knows it was me that he helped. Mm -hmm. So I can say thank you almost Get 10 it, years okay. later. Okay? Because <laughs> I help you better help her. And I lifted up my skirt and I showed the ambulance driver. He was like, no. Mm. He said, you got to go to the hospital. This mm. is much more serious. And that's kind of when I looked. And I seen all this stuff hanging out my knee. Mm -hmm. And I would, that kind of like panicked me, you know. Mm -hmm. But it panicked me that I thought if I get in the ambulance after passing all these ambulances and seeing people with hands missing, arms missing, things missing, you know, feeling the floor and all of this, I'm like, if I go to the hospital with just this little knee thing, they're just going to ignore me. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't, I didn't think I, I was scared that I wasn't going to get treated, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, like so, triage people. Would exactly. Them. So I, the ambulance driver took me to his ambulance and he put me inside and sure enough, there's more people in there and they were 20 times worse off than I am. And I'm just sitting there shaking and crying, you know. Um, now, where's your boss? Did you? I never saw him. Okay. I mean, he lived, but I never saw him. Okay. And I, I know I didn't really see him until six or seven months later, mm -hmm. but I didn't know that he lived because when I did finally get home, my um, boyfriend at the time said my boss had called me. Okay. And um, but I never, I never saw him. I was just left alone. I was just like walking the streets, and it was just. I wish your boss was like him. Flory Danish. Flory. Flory Danish. Okay. And um. I was walking the streets, and the streets were like you see, and like on here, mm -hmm. you know, and all of that, you know. The streets were all covered with everything, and yeah. it was just dust and just a mass of everything, everything. Yes. And um, I get in the ambulance, and other people, and all of a sudden I hear this like thunder, this, this loudness what it, it was people running and screaming and mm. screaming and hollering and I'm trying to get out the ambulance now because I'm like oh no I don't want to be trapped in this box you know it felt like a little box and I'm like I, I don't want to be trapped in this box and I tried to get out and the ambulance driver locked the ambulance and he said oh my god it's coming down mm. but I didn't know what he was talking about he jumped in the ambulance and he just started driving and all I remember is hearing him talk to, I guess, the base or whatever, and they said all the hospitals were full, mm -hmm. and we wound up going to some hospital that was far. No, we were still in New York, mm -hmm. we wound up going to the hospital by the UN. Oh. And that's far up. That's in the 40s, mm -hmm. all right? In, um, um, World Trade Center is lower than Low that. Lower than Okay, mm -hmm. so we went a distance. Mm -hmm. And the people, I remember, they were sitting on the curb, the doctors and the nurses were just sitting on the curb because they had no patients, mm. they had nobody. And then when we got out, we all had to get, we had to take a shower. They had a, a shower so you didn't have that stuff, Sudden, and, yeah, you know, debris. bacteria, mm. the, you know, anything. 
and we all had to go in there, and I remember sitting in the wheelchair freezing to death, because I'm in this air-conditioned hospital, it was September 11th, mm -hmm. it wasn't that cold, it wasn't that warm, but I was so cold, and I was so blessed, because I got um, a doctor who was actually, um, he was planning to be a plastic surgeon. Mm. And he did wonders. Mm. And the nurses and every day I, I thought I would be in a corner in the dark in the back and no. Mm. They came and got me and mm. put me on that operating table mm. and they must have gave me about a hundred thousand shots of whatever. Because <laughs> I was like, I don't feel nothing. Every time he touched me I was like, Yeah, okay, I gotta do whatever you gotta do. You mm -hmm. know. But I was so upset, so scared, and I remember trying to call home, finally, mm -hmm. finally. And I still did not know what had happened. Mm -hmm. You have to understand, I still don't know. Mm -hmm. I thought the world was coming to an end. Mm -hmm. And I just, I have, I, have, I have my daughter, my granddaughter, and Ray, you know, my mom was still alive then. And I, I said, I gotta call, I gotta mm -hmm. call. And I couldn't even dial the number. I couldn't even remember my phone mm -hmm. number. And the nurse came over and she held my hand and she told me to breathe deeply. And then she dialed the number for me. And my boyfriend he didn't believe because he saw both towers go down. Mm -hmm. and had not seen, had not seen me and thought it was a joke. He thought somebody was playing a joke.